Hello everyone, my name is Dan Hua. I'm a senior here, uh, here at the University of Michigan, and this is my final semester in the College of Engineering. I'm studying Biomedical Engineering with a minor in Biochemistry. And thank you for coming to my honors capstone. So I guess here we can just begin. So my project this last semester is being able to study and utilize uh, nanofabrication for the analysis of cardiomyocytes, which are heart cells um, of your human body. Um, I was able to have the fortunate opportunity to work uh, with Dr. Todd Heron in the Regeneration Core Laboratory at the North Campus Research Complex, which is within the Franco Cardiovascular Center. So the work that we do in this laboratory is just basically take um, a person's skin cells, reprogram them to become stem cells, which then we can reprogram them once again to become, say, heart cells. Now this uh, method of studying um, stem cells was actually discovered uh, in Japan uh, by Dr. Yamanaka, which he was able to basically reverse the life, the lifeline or the life cycle of cells uh, in which that you could take um, a mature stem cell, excuse me, mature cells within the human body and introduce certain factors that actually reprogram them back to stem cells, which then, again, you can program to become you know, lung cells, brain cells, or the like, if you have the proper factors. But again, our laboratory is focusing on the study of cardiomyocytes and then doing analysis afterwards. So here you have an image of what mature um, cardiomyocytes or heart cells look like. Um, we have a certain tag that uh, fluoresces the uh, sarcomeres or like the, the muscle fibers or the heart fibers um, within these heart cells. And then the blue is what tags the nucleus, which you can see here. So once um, cells are mature enough, um, then we're able to basically tag them like this. Only then, um, which once we've completed our analysis, that we're able to image them like this, we can do so. So my project kind of has to deal with the analysis part of cardiomyocytes, in which um, here you see this is basically a PDMS mold. Um, PDMS is a type of silicone, and it's actually softer and has some give to it that is a little bit more like the human body. When cells grow, they're not really fond of growing on plastic. You know, it's very hard. It doesn't really have that ability to, to, to flex. So that's why growing them within these wells here, um, this is a three by five, um, cells um, will go into each well here. Um, cells actually do a lot better and they actually start beating. On the right here, this is uh, an earlier mold, not the exact mold for this mold, but this is something that, uh, this is what we'd lay the silicone in and then basically peel it out in order to get this mold here. And notice that these two posts here, uh, there are two posts in each of these little wells here, and that's going to be important later. And basically, my goal was to be able to upscale that. Um, previously, that picture was only 15 wells in which you were only able to use the same media, do the same experiment on all 15 wells. You couldn't do you know, separate modifications or different varying trends on them. So basically, I scaled it up to 96 wells, um, basically, this well here is kind of an example of what I, I util, uh, modeled this off of. Um, I basically take uh, that silicone bottom and adhere it to a bottomless version of this 96 well plate here. And now, since they're in their separate compartments, you're able to run separate um, experiments within these. You can do trends, you know, vary concentrations of drugs, for example, across here, um, instead of them all have to be the same. So this was able to help improve experimentation. So once these cells are within there, um, we're actually able to analyze them through optical mapping. So basically, uh, we're able to tag these um, cardiomyocytes with a certain antibody that fluoresce light um, when um, electrical current is passed through it um, due to the um, the trap. Excuse me, due to the calcium channels within within the cardiomyocytes. So once we uh, basically have the the plate here on the bottom. And the camera up top, um, we can put an electrode within these cells and basically um, put an electrical impulse within there to basically force them to kind of beat, contract. Because once you uh, input an electrical impulse in there, um, these, these cells will fluoresce, and this camera can capture um, this fluorescence and then basically convert that 
into uh, it's an ECG trace in a sense. But you can see here, this image on the left is kind of still what the camera is seeing. Which here's, a, here's an example of a bright spot of when uh, electrical impulse happens and that cell contracts and uh, it'll fluoresce. And then the fluorescence is exhibited in these peaks here. Um, which uh, there is, was a MATLAB program that was created in which you're able to capture this information. We can see the uptake, downtake of that uh, action potential, and then this trace here is what you're able to analyze as to whether um, this patient has any problems. You know, you can see different shapes. Excuse me, um, the frequency, any abnormalities. You can tell to see if there's any problems just by looking at this trace here. Um, another thing that you can analyze, again, if you remember those two posts I mentioned, um, when the cardiomyocytes flex, so here you can play this uh, video here again, um, when they flex, they actually bend that silicone post. Um, you can see that here. And when they bend, they have a certain displacement. And, uh, using the power of physics, um, we're able to calculate how much force um, those cells are actually able to exhibit. So we can find um, what is the maximum force these, these heart cell cultures produce, um, you know, being able to do this calculation here. So we can figure out, you know, what drugs uh, are favorable for these heart cells. You know, this is not just a single heart cell. These are many, many heart cells with here that makes this um, three-dimensional culture here. So basically, my project had to do with, oh, oh there you go, my product, they uploaded. So was be able to, how many collect this data um, without doing the tedious work of doing all the analog inputs of analyzing the data afterwards. Because then um, the MATLAB was able to capture information, you still had to interpret and extrapolate um, other information from the data. And I just said that we would go to the route of nanofabrication, which is pretty cool. Um, be able to have mechanical sensors, for example here, um, that could read how much force uh, each heart cell culture was implementing, and also maybe doing a uh, electrical sensor as well to be able to collect that information without doing the actual fluorescence. So that was the idea of this project and be able to implement that. So doing research on this took quite a while and be able to implement that within the bottom of uh, my design. And unfortunately due to COVID-19, the majority of my fabrication process was going to be in March and April, which I was not able to do. But um, basically, again, what I would do is um, you know, take these stem cells from a human uh, and then be able to reprogram them in a two-dimensional culture and then hopefully when they differentiate we get healthy cardiomyocytes and those cardiomyocytes is what we then implement into my device here with a nanofabrication and then we do testing to see if um, the proper software was to collect the you know the, the electrical sensitivities as well as the mechanical sensitivities to the right of scaling um, and to see if the cells will grow successfully. Just because when we try the different factors, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that these cardiomyocytes will grow successfully. So it's another thing that we have to test for. So that's basically what, what I would do. And some kind of questions that uh, were asked to answer um, about this project, just because we can't do this in person, was uh, first what kind of inspired me to do this project. Again, doing the tedious you know, collection of data and doing the analysis you know, by hand and writing all these numbers down, I realized why don't we have machines and programs and softwares to collect this information. So that's why I came up with the idea to implement um, this uh, nanofabrication of nanosensors. Um, the most difficult part was doing research on um, sensors and nanofabrication is because I've never done this type of thing before. So trying to do that was pretty difficult and loading that from scratch was, was pretty difficult. Yeah, it was pretty hard. And then luckily, um, due to the fact that I am sticking around with this lab, um, I am going to be able to continue this project and be able to hopefully fabricate this thing in the, in the fall or maybe in the summer if possible. So I'd like to thank um, Dr. Heron and the research lab. Um, thank you for providing the mentorship and guidance. So it's Dr. Roca and Jeff Creech for doing the training with me and Dr. Barry Belmont within the biomedical engineering department. We're also giving me the engineering design um, background knowledge and inspiration. And thank you to the honors engineering staff for putting a great program, and I've enjoyed my time here. And again, thank you for coming to my capstone.